Well, we had a demolition derby last night. Ha! Ah, two nights ago. Saturday night. Today's Monday night. And uh, it was good to get back in the driver's seat. This is my second derby this year. And this is actually a kind of pro stock car. And it felt really good to be back in a, a more welded up car. Um, the V6 stock one was kind of fun. This one didn't last as long. But I feel like the hits were a lot bigger. Like I know some of these hits my back tires came off the ground because I felt it inside the car. I do have an in-car as well. But uh, you can kind of see what kind of mud was on the track. It's like a clay. And it, it's really, really slippery. As you can see, it, it just sticks to the treads. Um, I did use the back quite a bit. My plan was to try to use the back and make it to the feature. I actually did make it to the feature. I took third in my heat, which would get me a pass to the feature, but my car was too damaged to actually make it back into the feature, and I didn't bring parts. And they really didn't give us a whole lot of time to fix the cars. I, I could have, if they gave me another 10 or 15, 20 minutes, I could have went and got a spindle off one of the other Camrys that wasn't making the feature and, and make it back out, but I didn't, I didn't have enough time for that. Um, I really did like using the back of this car. Uh, again, this came exactly how I wanted to. The only thing that I would have changed a bit is maybe the trunk lid down a bit. Maybe tucking the trunk would have done that, but I still have never tucked a trunk on a Camry. I should do it one of these days. Uh, I took some good passenger door shots, but I'm okay with that. Um, this strut did end it up. I don't think it's the strut that's bent. Oh, look at the all the sheet metal behind the strut. I guess I was getting smoked into there pretty good. Holy, look at that. All the frames bending in behind it. And the reason for that is I had to remove the blocks behind the struts. So that, that's why that's happening. Um, well, maybe take a look to see how bad that is in behind there. Maybe I have to push the strut tower out. Frame is still straight. I think I only made one or two hits with the front of the frame though. Um, so I, I knew the front was going to be straight, especially because this is a more welded up car with a better bumper compared to the, the bone stock over there. Uh, this was built to thrill show rolls. So it's still, still going. Um, but back here, this side went pretty good, but this side here was actually in better shape after the last time this car was run. But when you come to this side, the sheet metal is into the tire a little bit, but that's an easy fix. We can just cut a little bit out and hammer it up. Uh, we'll just jack it up and do what we got to do. All the rear struts are still straight. In the back here, it hasn't moved at all, which is really nice. You know, I, I think that a little bit of threaded rod in the back actually helps these cars stay together a lot better than uh, bone stock. And I think bone stock does have its place, but I don't, uh, I don't know. The price of cars these days, it's hard to justify putting a Camry into bone stock. All my threaded rods come loose because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to hold it and pull it down, especially with the back window bar. You can see it doing its job, which is nice. It's nice for actually something to do its job these days. Um, the bolts and the fenders, I don't think that actually helped out at all. It's kind of pushing that in. On the inside, no complaints. Cage held together good. Uh, fuse panel, I got, I got a little spider from the weekend. Uh, shifter, zero issues, um, zero issues on the inside overall, nothing else went really wrong. In the front here though, this side here is still straight, I did have something come up over my hood, which not exactly sure what it was, but whatever it was, it was right there. Um, car was getting a little warm, I'd like to take a look at the radiator and make sure it's okay, but this is the reason why I didn't make it out into feature. These are my most favorite tires in the world, and they're full of mud. I haven't got a good look at this yet. We're going to be taking this thing apart here shortly, fixing it up, because I do need my trailer for tomorrow night, so I would like to be able to pull this car off the trailer and get a good look at it. But that's pretty much what we're going to be doing tonight, is fixing this corner of the car, seeing what is bent, and uh, fixing it. It is a low rider right now. It's just a little bit too low uh, for me. But from what I've seen, it looks like we bent, broke the, uh, the strut, the spindle, and maybe an axle. But you can see that the axle was riding on the frame. So the axle is no real big surprise. But 
Um, this thing here, after I, I broke the spindle, I was actually still going for quite a bit. And uh, I know that you guys, and I, I even me, agrees that posi cars are really hard to drive. And this thing was a very hard car to drive. But because of how muddy the track was, the posi actually may have worked out to a little bit of an advantage for me. Because of that spindle breaking, there were still seven cars alive when I broke that spindle. I thought it was maybe a broken strut or something like that. So I was trying to just to keep moving, keep making hits. I ended up just redlining the snot out of this thing. But um, it was really hard to control. I, anyway, the posi saved me. And I know a lot of you guys say it's not worth it. And I agree, for 90% of the shows, maybe even 94% of the shows out there, Posi is a waste of a Camry. But at this derby, the, the Posi saved me. So I'm going to start jacking this thing up so I can take a good look at that uh, driver's side strut and see what we're looking at. So I just got this tire off. And I'm going to show you my first impressions. This here is just a spacer I put to keep the, t the rim away from the caliper. Um, this is honestly crazy. I don't know how... Uh, I'm just going to show this to you. This axle is not broken. And the strut is underneath the tie rod, which is holding the tie rod up. But the axle is not broken. That is honestly probably one of the craziest brakes... I don't even know. I'm going to have to go get a pry bar to get that off there. I, I've never seen them do this. I've seen struts break. Like this one snapped clean off. But usually the axle breaks right away. This axle did not break. Look at that. And then the strut has gone in and behind. It's now sitting behind the tie rod. And it looks like that's what bent the tie rod. But look at the strut from the rim. Oh, look how full of mud this thing is. Oh my goodness. This, this is great. That is unbelievably sharp. Listen, I've done some weird stuff to Toyotas over the years and I've never seen, you can see how hot that got. What's the back of this rim look like? Oh yeah, you can see where it was rubbing and then Something obviously hit it hard there, but you can see where this tire's been rubbing all the way around. Uh, I don't want to cut these tires apart. I really don't. Because I know I'll never get a tire back onto that with how damaged that bead is. These are my favorite rims. My favorite rims. Well, let's go get a pry bar and see if we can pop that strut off there and get a better look at this because this is definitely different. So we got the strut spun around. The axle is still not broken. I just want to show you guys the quality of this clay. I built a nice little bird's nest out of it. If you turn it upside down, it's now an igloo. <laughs> it's a mud igloo. Oh, but look at the mud. I wonder if some promoters would call that stuffing the fenders. It's just filled with mud. <laughs> Holy jeez. Um, so we're gonna grab a 22 mil, I'll start pulling this apart. Uh, this is 17 mil. Take the brakes off, put them on the trailer, and then the bottom bolt, the bottom bolt's holding the ball joint on or 17 mil. We're just gonna start tearing this thing apart and start repairing it because I gotta get it off the trailer. I kinda wanna drive it off. So I got this spindle out of my garage. We're just gonna do a quick look over it to make sure there's no cracks in it. Cause I would hate to put in, I don't know what's been derby and what's not been derby. I don't know where it's gone. I don't keep track of that stuff. Ball joint feels a bit loose. I think it's fine. I've, I think I've only ever broke one bottom ball joint. What does scare me is this axle. It, it really doesn't move too freely, but it still works. So I think I'm gonna put it back in. We've got everything apart now. We did pull out the axle. The tie rod is bent. I don't know if we're going to fix that yet. I'll maybe go take a look to see if I have another spare tie rod. We might just put it back in for now and maybe change it later. I'm not 100% sure. I just want this thing off my trailer because I need the trailer tomorrow night. So I'm going to go see if I have another spare tie rod. But 
that was a fresh break. That was a, you look like you maybe have a little bit of a crack from a previous run. You see how the color's a little bit different? I don't know. But that's definitely how that went. It was like that. No, yeah, that was a, that was definitely broken. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think the two different color differences is uh, a previous crack, or you think that's just where it started to shear? But that's a pretty heavy piece of a spindle, that's for sure. Jesus. I'm a firm believer in anti-seize while putting these things together because you can see how much I take this apart. This one right here is a four-cylinder car, but you can tell by the sunroof that this car actually used to be a V6. So... I've actually had all this apart before and I've put it all back together. So I'm going to go get some anti seize and we're going to start putting some stuff back in there and swapping, putting all this stuff back to stock. I'm going to go take a look for a tie rod as well. So I got this all put back together. Uh, I did not have another tie rod, so I tried to straighten as best as I could. Honestly, if I had the parts at the derby, I didn't bring spindles. I brought struts and I brought axles, but I didn't bring a spindle. Um, if I had had these parts at the Derby in 25 minutes, I could have been back in the feature. But unfortunately, I didn't have a spindle. Make sure this thing doesn't have cracks. Jesus, make sure there's no cracks. Um, but yeah, I got it all back together. I ended up saving the brake disc and the four-cylinder caliper. I took off this spindle and just put them in my garage to save them. But yeah, she sheared right off. I bought these new rims for the Lexus. I want to see what they look like on this thing. Ka-chow! Should I pull the old whistle and diesel and take the $1,000 used rims into the demolition derby? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I bought these for the Lexus, but I thought the backspacing would be a, a little bit more, but... Kind of like them. That's enough of that joke, though. Let's get these really expensive pieces of aluminum off of this car. So we got it all back together. Shame. Look at those tires. Those are my favorite tires. Well, anyway, it's been put away. Um, hopefully, I get to run this thing again this year. If not, it'll sit here all winter until next year. But what a shame. I thought I would do a little bit better than that. This is my first time getting to run it, but it was fun being able to run a little bit of a welded up car again. But thanks for watching everybody we got her all fixed up new spindle same axle same tie rod same strut same tire same brakes just a new spindle remember guys make sure you bring parts to the derby i wasn't expecting heats so i did not bring parts but uh this is the first time that bolton's ever ran heats so thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you back here tomorrow on zach's workshop